The environment matters if you're to continue. We demonstrated in the morning that any environment you stay in, it is attached to you. For example, I have three people here. Let them come and I show them. I'm going to give people the, the understanding of speed. Okay. Hold your hands. Uh-huh. How you sit down? Sit down. Hold her hand. You also sit down. Hold her hand and sit down. Okay. This is her environment. The Bible says, since we are surrounded, to be surrounded, that's an environment, by a great crowd of witnesses. So, this environment surrounding this woman, whatever environment you're in is attached to you, is connected with you. You Either you change it or it changes you. You can't get out of it because it's attached to you. So the Bible says, environment is important. But for us to, to, to achieve, we must run out of it. Amen? So when the environment is attached to you, you cannot run. Run and we see. Run. Run, run, run. So, this environment, these friends, this village she is in, where they are not educated, the environment around cannot make her go any further. Listen. Listen. As she's trying and failing, if I stayed in Kanungu, I would be a pastor by now. But I will be in the village because I was already born again. I was already a pastor by 12 years. But I would be in the village. I would be speaking my Ruchiga. Hallelujah. I would be eating Vitekere. Yams. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. I would be drumming drums. I would be a village pastor. And the village they taught us studying was bad. They taught us using internet was bad. They taught us the foolishness of the village would be in me. So I would be pastoring 10 people because I had 5 people by then. I remember. Hallelujah. I would be pastoring 10 people. Comfortable. They bring rumonde. They bring eggs. They bring suju. I will be happy. As a village pastor. Change of environment. By God. It's God who pulled me out. Has changed my mindset. And changed the way I do things. Now I can continue. Praise the Lord. So, and if I'm going to continue, I must change the environment. Change the mindset. If this church stays the same, for the next 10 years, we are going nowhere. This church must keep changing. Amen? If we don't change the environment we are in, we cannot continue. So this woman, she has to detach herself from the environment. And she can run around without the environment. She'll be a different person. Go back and sit. Clap hands to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I once was told it is easy to bring person from the village. But to take the village out of him is hard. You must take that village mindset from your mind. Praise the Lord. I gave you an example. I had a suit. I liked it so much. I bought a lot of money. I loved that suit. I gave it to one of us. You remember the boy, some of you. When I gave this suit to this boy, within two weeks, it was dirty. Within two weeks, it had holes. Within one month, it was a rug. But I had kept this suit for more than three years. What happened to this suit? She came and gave, he, actually, he, sorry, he came and gave a testimony. He put in on the suit, bragging in the church. I have a suit also. But what happened to the suit? The suit found a man who has a version of another, 
a version of the village, a version of an environment. So when it entered this environment, it could not stay for more than one year. But I had kept it for more than three years and it was looking nice. But when it came to this man, it just needed two weeks, three weeks to become a rug. That's what environment makes you. Hallelujah. The version of you, the beauty you want, it needs you out of the environment. Then the future you get will come. As long as you attach the environment, you cannot become anything. Bible says, lay aside every weight. Another thing is weights. Things that you're holding. We have an example in the morning service. We give it again. Everything. Look at that. The Bible says that let us lay aside every weight. So you need weight. You need weight. Uh -huh. Okay. Some of them are even carrying speakers, big like speakers. Okay, come here. Run and we see. Keep running. Keep running. This one is going to sweat and get tired very fast. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh huh. You saw he's running now? He's already getting tired. Why is he getting tired? Stand here. Because he's carrying what? Carrying what? Weights. The things you hold unto in this journey will hinder your progress. You cannot be consistent while you're carrying this thing. For ex let's look at this one. This one, these are people that you're carrying in your, in your heart. They hurt you. They stole your money. They abused you. They raped you. They did everything. You're carrying them where? Here. You're saying, I cannot forgive. Every morning, you see them. Carrying them. This one. Debts. You're carrying a hundred debts with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This one. You're carrying the village. The anger of the village. You hate so and so and so and so and so. It is this one. When I grow up and I get money, I will go and show them that I also went to school. Those village people. Okay, it is there. You also carrying it. Then you walk like a donk and don't get money. You get frustrated because you want to go and show them you also went to school. Hallelujah. Hey, this one. What else are you carrying? Tell me. What else do they carry? Apart from sin, what else do they carry? Eh? Which one? Anger. What else? Eh? Envy. What else? Eh? Ignorance. What else? So, the Bible says, lay aside every weight. Put them down. Every weight. Progress that will make you go further in your marriage, in your ministry, in your family, in everything. Put down weights so that you may continue. The reason why we give up is because we are carrying things. We are carrying people. We are carrying, carrying, carrying. That's when you can reach somewhere. So I cannot continue anymore. You fall down. You are carrying things. Put them down. When you are free like this, you run and run and never faint. Run and run and run. As the Bible says. Praise the Lord. He only needs the energy of the Holy Ghost to go further. And clap to the Lord. So the Bible says. Also sin entangles you. Praise the Lord. This is what sin does. Madam, come here. Maybe come here. Come here. Come here. Stand here. There are four people, and they, they surround her, hold her, hand, her hands. Face this side. Okay. Surround her, surround her, hold her hands. Okay. Come here. 
So that lady wants to get married to this handsome man here. The handsome man loves that lady. But this man, this woman, the Bible says the sin that which Israel entangles us, the first sin is fornication, it is here. Amen? The second sin is here, lying. The second sin is here, disobedience. The, sec- the third sin is here, which one? Which one? Eh? Pride. Which one? You know better what entangles you, please. <laughs> you are refusing to tell me because you want to, don't want people to know. <laughs> eh? Pride. Okay. So, the Bible says, the sin, what does sin do? Sin will entangle. So, I want you to find ways. Okay, stay. F- go through them and go and meet your husband. Go, go. If you fail, you go and pass there and go and meet your husband. You go and meet your husband. You go. (laughs) The husband is waiting for you. Go and meet. Go. Go. What is happening? Sin is doing what? Entangling her. Amen. Now, behind the sin, there is curses. Behind the sin, there are diseases. Behind the sin, there is poverty. Behind the sin, there is suffering. Behind the sin, there is a lot. She reaches a time when she cannot get out. Sin entangles you. It hinders you from continuing. So you stay in one place for years because you are in sin. Get out of sin. You will be free. Don't say I know it. Get out of it. There is one thing to know it. To know I am in the wrong. And continue doing it. It's another thing to get out. The only way to be free is to get out. So when she wakes up one day. Because. As long as I don't want to get out of it. It will entangle her. When she wakes up one day and says. I, am, I want to be free. She will come with all authority. And do like this. And break the cord of sin. Uh huh. Do it. Ah, she'll be out of sin, and now she's free to go and meet her husband. Go and meet your husband. Ah. A handicraft to the Lord. Go and sit, sister. She's now free to meet her husband. Meet her destiny. Meet her career. Meet her God. Rise up. The future you need cannot find you in the same environment. In the same, with the same weights. And in the same sin. When you get out of it, you will be free to meet that future. God will give it to you.